Hello, everyone. Welcome to our third session of the year of the Signals Research Suite Quarterly Connect Community Series. We released Signals Research Suite last year as a complete unified SaaS software for scientific research. And in this third Signals Research Suite Quarterly Connect, we explore the capabilities that you may not know about in Signals Research Suite. My name is Chris Stump, and I'm a product marketing manager for Signals Research Suite and Signal Synergy at Revity Signals. And I will be your moderator for this session. We have a fantastic webinar for you today, but before I introduce today's speakers, I want to share with you what I think you will learn by watching this webinar. So first, there's a lot of publicly available data sets that you can use to enrich uh, your, your research and your data sets and to make meaningful insights for your own research. So Alex and Leanna are going to give you an overview of the public data sets that are available and give you some ideas on how you can use them in Signals Research Suite. Second, uh, Signals Research Suite is a powerful uh, drug discovery research platform, but there are probably many capabilities that you really don't know about yet. So Eduardo and Sunetra will uh, both show you some capabilities for in vitro and in vivo studies. Eduardo is, is going to introduce you to, to working with single and multidimensional instrumental readouts using Signals Research Suite. He will introduce you to multi-parametric uh, curve fitting of in vitro data. And then third, uh, Sinetra is going to introduce approaches for streamlining in vivo workflows in Signals Research Suite. Specifically, she will discuss the reproducibility crisis as it relates to um, in vivo studies and introduce you to apps in Signals Research Suite that can help you increase reproducibility. And so now uh, I'll introduce the speakers. And so I'll, I'll introduce all the speakers and then they will hand off one to the next. So on the, the first topic of uh, unlocking hidden gems, why public data sets are a treasure trove, our speakers are Alexandra Van Fakithau and Leanna Schuster. Alex and Leanna are both field application scientists at Revity Signals. Alex has a PhD in biomedical engineer from Drexel University, and Leanna has a master's degree in organic chemistry from UCLA, UCLA and has worked uh, at GSK for 15 years before joining uh, Revity Signals. Our presenter on the topic of successfully analyzing screening, uh, our, our screening assays capturing single to multi and high dimensional readouts is Eduardo Gonzalez Coto. Uh, Eduardo is the in vitro lead uh, product manager at Revity Signals. He has a PhD in molecular genetics from the University of Geneva, Switzerland, and has over 25 years of industrial experience at GSK, GeneProd, Siena Biotech, and others. And then finally, uh, Sunetra Ray will be speaking about transforming in vivo research with Signals Research Suite. Sunetra is the in vivo lead product manager and has a PhD in molecular pharmacology from UCLA and over uh, four, four plus years of industry, industry experience in preclinical pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamic uh, studies, drug discovery, and translational research. She has broad experience in both in vitro and in vivo studies. All right, so before I turn uh, the presentation over, just one housekeeping reminder. Uh, this webinar is recorded, so that means that uh, you can go back and review some of the, the, the sections that you, you want to review again. And also, we will send out the recording in the next um, couple of days. So without further ado, let's jump into the presentations. Hello, and welcome to another Signals Research Suite Connect. My name is Alexandra, and I will kick us off with today's session talking a little bit about public data sets. As part of my role, I have had many of our customers ask for help on expanding their scientific focus, utilizing what is out there, and we would like to share some of the resources, challenges, and ways we have unlocked the treasures gained from analyzing public data. Let's take a quick step back, though, and talk about why public data is so valuable. Advances of genomics, sequencing, and high-throughput technologies have led to the creation of large volumes of diverse data sets for drug discovery. Analyzing these data sets to better understand disease and discover new drugs is key. Open Data initiatives in basic and clinical research have dramatically increased the types of data available to the public. 
In the past few years, we have witnessed successful use of big data in many sectors across the whole drug discovery pipeline. This slide just skims the surface on some remarkable data sets that led to the discovery of new targets, drugs, or drug response biomarkers. Main ones I have worked include NCBI's Gene Expression Omnibus, or GEO, which is a publicly available data set focusing on functional genomics. Additionally, we have the PubChem Bioassay database, which contains bioactivity screens of chemical substances, ClinVar, which is a freely accessible public archive of reports of human variations classified for diseases and drug responses, and another one worth mentioning is the Broad Institute, which has an expansive list of data sets spanning from uh, CCLE, the Cancer Cell Line Encyclopedia, to the Cancer Therapeutic Response Portal, which was sponsored in part by the NCI. So the list goes on. If you're looking for a complete list of data sets, I don't think one actually exists, but we can share some of the many important reference data sets that have been created and released and can be used for drug discovery. Having worked with public data sets, there are four basic tasks researchers want to perform. We would like to tease your curiosity and selectively review some outstanding cases leveraging these four basic tasks within our signals research suite. These include searching and retrieving data, preparing for analysis, analyzing and sharing our findings. But wait, there is more. When it comes to public data sets, there's so much information formatted in different ways, but we need to do two things initially. First, wrangle the data. This is the inspection of the data to make sure we have no missing values, consider whether or not the data needs to be merged or transformed, consider if there are any inconsistencies, typos, or data type mismatches, and basically find any incorrect data. This gives ourselves a certain level of confidence before we dive into the analysis. Secondly, is enrichment of the data. Do we have metadata? Are there some variables we can extract from the headers or the descriptions that can assist in better setting up the questions we're trying to answer? Take here an example. Sample names are concatenated and include cell line name and tissue type. But what if we want to explore all cell line expression based on different tissue types? We would need to parse out the information before we proceed. And that's exactly what we did. Using a data set from the GG lab at Harvard, we were able to compare over 12,000 protein profile expressions across 370 cell lines and different tissue types. Using the Singles Research Suite, we were able to also index all compounds that have been tested with various cell lines and retrieve this information in combination with the protein data. Let's quickly peek into how this was done. The first thing we needed to do was check on the data. So here we can see that the files came with a metadata table that basically describes what each column is. And you can see here that originally we have protein, gene symbol, description, group ID, etc. And then we start getting into descriptions about cell line slash tissue type. And you can see here that uh, everything contains an underscore uh, so we can uh, separate out these columns. So the original table actually was a matrix. So we can see here the individual columns that contain those headers. Um, and what we want to do is basically, through a series of transformations, be able to actually extract the values, um, remove any missing values, um, so we're uh, not uh, looking at any empty information, and then uh, extract the cell line name as well as the tissue type um, so we can perform uh, the analysis. So this is what the final table looked like. So through a series of unpivots um, and pivots, we were able to transform this table into a tall skinny, 
where we have now all of the sample names under this category, the value in one column, and then we can extract from this particular uh, column as a first pass the cell line and uh, the tissue name um, for, for each one of the sample. Following the transformation of the data, we now want to be able to aggregate, search, and retrieve all of the data that we would like to look at. And so the Signals Inventa dashboard, the global search dashboard, does just that, allows us to look for not only cell lines and assay results, but also explore in more detail any associated information that we may have about the compounds that have been tested. So if we know, for example, that there are publicly available data sets where we have tested specific compound IDs or names or structures um, and have associated results based on different assays, we're able to basically create an index where all of that information can come together and then retrieve data based on cells and those global proteomics values, and also retrieve specific information across all of these assays. So if there's particular expression results, you see 50 values, um, in vivo or in vitro data can all uh, be uh, extracted. And so we can see a quick summary of all of the data and once we start retrieving the data, all of the different types of visualizations, correlations, um, uh, information about uh, the cell lines, in sp specifically um, structures that may be, uh, have been tested, can all be retrieved in one view. And so from here on, we can start exploring, given a particular set of uh, data, if we are uh, exploring different tissue types, uh, we can start looking at uh, variations within those uh, across either the tissues or uh, across individual cell types as well. The second half of this presentation will be covered by my colleague, Leanna, who will expand into some exciting ways of uh, analyzing public data set highlighting both high throughput screening as well as PubChem. Thanks, Alex. My name is Leanna, and I'm also a member of the Revity Signals Field Application Scientist team. Um, I'd like to continue the theme that Alex started of how to um, take large amounts of data from a public data set and use Signals Research Suite to dig in and find the scientific value therein. Um, I am going to focus on uh, data from a high throughput screening campaign that has been made available on PubChem. Um, this data set contains just over 370,000 compounds. And at face value, it looks relatively simple when you open up the raw data file. There's only seven columns here. You've got three identifiers, um, it's like a row ID, PubChem substance and chem chemical ID, a smile string that identifies the chemical structure, and then three endpoint values, um, uh, which we would define as uh, measurements or key calculations. Um, so there's this activity score, which is just really the assay readout um, relative to a control, this reproducibility cosine transform coefficient where they have defined when there are replicates in the data, um, how uh, reproducible is that activity score value across the replicates. And then this PubChem activity score where they have combined the two previous uh, endpoints to give an activity score that takes into account um, how reproducible the data is. So this is our data. Uh, the challenge really is how do we find the signal amongst the noise? How do we, you know, find the patterns so that we can convert this, you know, long list of uh, identifiers and numbers into actual scientifically relevant SAR data? So really what we have at our disposal are the lead discovery chem charts that are part of Signals Research Suite. What these are, and I've shown the list over here, are a 
comprehensive set of visualizations and advanced calculations that um, uh, amplify and augment what's already available native in Spotfire. Um, what's really key is that these chem charts are built with scientific use cases in mind. Uh, and there's a few of them that uh, are really tailored towards either small molecules or biopolymers and biosequences, but um, the vast majority of these actually work um, really nicely across the wide range of um, molecule sizes and complexity that you might be working with. Um, so I'm going to zoom in on a few of these visualizations that um, happen to be um, particularly informative um, with that PubChem data set. So this is an MPO chem chart. Um, that stands for multi-parameter optimization. Um, what that means is that you set um, the pro properties or parameters from your data that are most important. Each of those becomes a vertical colored axis along this distributions plot. Um, and then you can uh, scan through your data and you get these traces that show you how each compound, um, uh, where it lies across each of these axes. And um, in fact, you, know, you can quickly see how much you are deviating from a property range region that might be your, um, your ideal uh, you know, candidate selection criteria. Um, this view uh, c combines a chemcharts table with a standard scatter plot and a chemcharts radar plot. And what's nice is these all interact with each other. So here I've highlighted a few compounds. They show up in the table as well as in the radar plot, where just like with the MPO, um, I got to choose which properties form each axis of this web-like plot. And then each of the compounds I selected is overlaid um, in a different color, so we can easily compare across our data set. Um, as a former medicinal chemist, I'm a big fan of this SAR map chem chart, which here is combined with a gallery chem chart. This is basically once you've already identified um, a key chemical series and I've defined different substituent positions, you can plot um, two of those different substituent positions against each other. See the entire range of um, uh, substituents at each of those spots and um, identify where are there holes in your, uh, your SAR, like right here, there's no compounds. Um, and, or where might a combination of two substituents provide an unexpected synergy in your data? Um, when we zoom in, we see each of these small boxes represents eight compounds. So you can see there's eight compounds with this particular combination of substituents. Um, they're colored according to the activity score gradient that's been defined. And then each of those eight also shows up over here in the gallery view, um, which is basically a form builder interface where when you um, create this dashboard, you decide which fields to be um, <clears throat> displayed in what kind of orientation. Uh, and that can even you know include color gradients so that you can you know visually quickly spot um, key data points. The last one of these I'm gonna uh, highlight for now is a Venn diagram, and um, just like really any of these chem charts, you can you know uh, run the gamut from um, you know very. Uh, simple to very complex uh, data visualizations. Something like this, um, oops, this uh, diagram here uh, is going to be you know, a Venn diagram that looks like um, ones that you guys have probably all encountered outside of science. Um, this one, each circle represents basically one of Lipinski's rules. As you can see um, how many compounds lie in each circle and in the intersections. Can also get more creative. Like here, I've already um, defined a chemical series and a subseries, and so each of these circles represents a certain chemotype of substituents at a given position. So, with that said, let's um, get out of uh, PowerPoint and actually look at Signals Research Suite live so we can see how these tools all work with each other 
to help us find the value in our data. Okay, so now we've switched over to Spotfire for Signals within Signals Research Suite. Um, you can see that I brought in that PubChem data set and it came in as a table automatically converting the smile string to a view of the, each chemical structure in the series. Um, my starting point looking at this data was to create a chemistry chem chart type. Um, there's a lot of features within this, so let's uh, take a look. So we start um, by let's just add some simple physical chemical properties um, to uh, help describe each molecule. So you can see there's a couple dozen um, built in properties that can easily be calculated. I just went for about five of my kind of favorite go to properties when I'm first examining a data set. And each of those, of course, gets added as its own column in the data. Um, the next step is to use the scaffold extraction, which is one of these chemistry analyses. What that's going to do is examine each chemical structure, um, uh, get rid of any uh, kind of pendant uh, side substituents and get it down to just the core of the structure. We got another new column that shows the structure of the identified scaffold. This is going to allow us to start to group um, compounds by similar cores. And then I built this uh, histogram, which is showing individual scaffolds across the bottom and just row count on the y-axis. And this is zoomed in and I want to take a look at some of the peaks in this data. So this one here, let's see, um, to my um, you know, chemist eye, that looks like it could be an interesting scaffold to look into further. There's nearly a thousand compounds with that chemotype and um, it's kind of an interesting structure. Uh, how about this one here? I can get my mouse there, there we go. That's a fairly simple, just uh, phenyl um, And over here, yeah, that one uh, look also, if I can get it to stay up on the screen, there we go, looks pretty interesting. Um, 700 uh, so odd compounds with this cyclic sulfonamide. Um, I think that's worth investigating further. So I'm gonna call these the benzyl sulfonamide and benzamide series moving forward. So um, with those identified, we can uh, do substructure searches. Um, you can do as many of these as you want, these also create simple new columns in your data set. They're just Boolean true false. Did um, it find this substructure in the full molecule? Um, you can easily you know, filter or uh, in or out any of the uh, substructures. Um, you can even do uh, searches with uh, lists of atoms or wildcards um, if you want to uh, uh, you know, have a more expansive substructure search. So um, lots of options here. Um, let's take a look then at some of those visualizations in a live view. Um, so we've got that MPO distribution um, where we've chosen a handful of properties. Um, you can easily filter these data using these sliders. And as I scan through the um, the table on the left, you see that those uh, traces are automatically uh, coming up. Um, even when I just mouse over some of these, uh, these compounds, we can see where they lie across the properties. Um, we've got that radar plot um, where uh, Right now, nothing is marked. Um, we've got about uh, 6,600 compounds in this benzyl sulfonamide series. Um, but if I start you know, marking things on, on here, we're gonna build out that radar plot and the table. Um, and let's say, uh, you know, you can put a couple more on there. How about, there we go. Um, if I don't like this overlaid view, I'll show you a little trick. You can just go into the properties of the radar to appearance and say enable trellis. That's going to now break it apart into each compound having its own smaller uh, radar plot. 
So you've got some options. Uh, we can also see that Venn diagram that we looked at, um, which here is coupled with a table. So we can start to do things like, I wanna see how many compounds are in this sweet spot that fulfill all three of the um, requirements. And from the 6,900 rows in this data set, we've gone down to 4,900 compounds. And the, um, the other uh, Venn diagram is indicating which circles have um, compounds that are within the filtered data set. So um, once again, everything on a single dashboard page is interactive with each other. Um, so doing this, we've really been able to, you know, to whittle down to you know, start with a very large um, amount of data. Here, remember we had 370,000 rows we were able to identify some key uh, chemical series and then start interrogating um, the data within those series to see things like which substituents um, are most favorable, which combinations have and have not been uh, synthesized. And based on all that data, figure out where to move forward um, if you were using this as a starting point in a drug discovery campaign. So I hope all this has been useful in showing how um, public data sets really do represent um, a treasure trove of information um, if you just have the correct tools to unlock the, the detail, find the, the important patterns. And um, the it, for a data set like this PubChem high throughput screen, um, the chem charts really uh, serve that purpose extremely well in getting you um, quickly to the answers you need. So thank you for your time and um, we can move on to today's next speaker. Thank you for joining this presentation to understand how to successfully analyze screening assays, capturing either single or multiple and even high dimensional readouts. So modern screening assays take advantage of the recent advances in instrumentation, allowing to capture multiple readouts simultaneously. Together, these readouts can better capture the complexity of the underlying biology, like in the context of flow cytometry, gene expression, or even from images with high content screen. However, Harnessing the benefits of these instrumentation advances requires advanced analysis and visualization software. The Signals Research Suite flexibly covers all the dimensions of innovative screening approaches at scale to interpret better and faster your assay results. At Revity Signals Software, we have recently added to the Signals Research Suite the capability to analyze multi-parametric data in our automated workflows on top of the existing single readout or high content screening data interpretation and visualization. In the Signals Research Suite, analyzing single parameter or high content screening data has been available for a long time, but we recently introduced the ability to analyze multi-parametric data that is not high content data, but typically flow cytometry or even mass cytometry, also called CITOF type of data, with the flexibility to deal with hundreds of different parameters, a couple of orders of magnitude more than some of our competitors. Let me show you how easy this can be achieved. Let's start by first signing in into the Signals Research Suite. And let's take a look at a specific experiment that I have created to show the multi-parametric analysis new capabilities. As you can see, I have a multi-parametric data set in my notebook in an experiment and I'm going to open Signal Spotfire online 
to analyze the data. The tool I'm going to use for this analysis is the Signals Calculations Explorer. This tool allows you to automate the creation of a specific curve fit into the workflows to analyze your data and automate the whole process. So let's create a template with this multi-parametric data and use a logistic regression for the fitting. Signals is going to compute the curve fits for all the data in this experiment. And this data is actually flow cytometry data with different cell surface markers together with live cell counts and percentage of live cells of singlets. So you can see that the whole data has been analyzed in this first run, but with a few clicks, it's now possible to manage this curve fit and edit the data by parameter. For this, the data set contains a column called parameter, and this column is actually referencing these different surface cell markers, which are intensity values and the different counts. So let's choose, for instance, to separate the live cells as percentage of singlets from the intensity measures. For this, I select all the data that is related to the percentage of live cells. And now you can see that the curves are immediately associated to this selection. Now it is possible to change the parameter specifically for the percentage values. Let's say that I would like to set a minimum of one, minus 100 and 100 for the maximum. So these values will be specifically added as the settings for all the percentage of life cells values. And if we take a look at the intensity data, like in this example here, you can see that the default values are still used for the curve fit, which has been recomputed for the specific settings that we have introduced. And if we take a look at the percentage of life cells, for instance, here, you will see that we have changed the settings specifically for these type of curves. So it is now possible actually to deal with hundreds of these parameters and define specifically for each parameter how you would like the fit to be applied. And if you update your Calculations Explorer template with this settings that you have introduced, that template will be ready to be saved in the cloud, in the shared repository, and then reused in automated workflows. So it becomes extremely simple to actually analyze data, which is multi-parametric, in the Signals Research Suite and automate workflows. Last but not least, it's very important for scientists to be able to manually control the quality of each fit and ensure that some of the fits do not require 
different parameters. For this, we have created a mark curve manual mode, which is not automated, but allows you to decide for specific curves. For instance, this set of points here uh, to change manually the values associated to this data point. So here I'm changing these values and signals indicates that this is going to be specific to individual curves and it's not going to be part of an automated workflow. But still, this is exactly what is required for manual QA of all the curves and changing the parameters specifically at the end of an automated multi-parametric analysis. I hope this short demonstration has convincingly illustrated the flexibility and ease of use of the Sinus Research Suite covering the broad spectrum of data types produced by modern screening technologies. For more information, please contact us directly. Hello, everyone. Thank you all for joining the session today. Today, we are going to talk about leveraging Signals Research Suite to transform in vivo preclinical research. Now, before I dive in, I would like to take a moment to provide some background information and also to set the context for what we're going to discuss next. So what is in vivo preclinical research? In vivo preclinical research involves running a variety of tests in animal models to evaluate the performance of a potential drug candidate before the therapeutic candidate is advanced to clinical trials. These tests are designed to evaluate various aspects of the new drug entity. We ask questions like, will it be effective in a living body? How will it be metabolized? What will be the body's response to the new molecule? Which organs or tissues will the drug distribute to? And most importantly, will it show toxicity or adverse reactions once it's administered in the body? Now, these are really critical studies, and the data accuracy is of utmost importance to ensure that the drug candidate will be successful in clinical trials. Sadly, latest reports have shown that the success rate of clinical drug candidates in clinical trials are dropping every year with the current success rate being at 11% only. So what is going on? When talking to the people on pharmaceutical industry and preclinical research specifically, it's evident that they're facing a major challenge and it's called the reproducibility crisis. Surveys conducted by big farmers like Amgen and Bayer have shown that more than 50% of the preclinical data is non-reproducible. This results in a loss of approximately $28 billion per year in the U.S. alone on an average. In fact, another survey published in Nature showed that more than 70% of the researchers surveyed said that they are unable to reproduce the published or legacy data. So this is very disturbing. But what could be the reason? Well, there are many factors, but the one that we often hear is lack of traceability. Researchers say that they're unable to access original protocol, raw data, or data analysis method, and therefore they're unable to reproduce the data. Moreover, with advancement of technologies, we're now generating bigger and larger data sets that, that are getting harder and harder to manage. Therefore, it's important for researchers to have access to a system that can standardize their workflows and also centralize the data. When we spoke to our industry partners in the in vivo domain, they also mentioned other additional challenges. As we know, in vivo research is a highly collaborative workspace. Samples are constantly getting shipped around to internal and external labs or CROs. Data is being generated by multiple labs using a wide array of methods. But surprisingly, till this date, data is still being managed by unstructured Excel worksheets or paper printouts. This is making it impossible to maintain traceability. Workflows are still not automated, 
and hence a significant amount of time is wasted in tracking activities via emails or in Slack or team threads or even via undocumented verbal exchanges in the hallway. To top it all, data is collected using a variety of instruments across many labs, making data management a practical nightmare. The data needs to be centralized to facilitate data sharing, collaboration, and to avoid the creation of data silos. So what are the experts saying? The experts are strongly advocating for the urgent adoption of a robust digital platform to tackle these challenges head on. The industry therefore needs a solution that can standardize workflows, centralize the data, and streamline processes, thereby fostering collaboration and freeing up time for scientific innovations. We bring to you Signals Research Suite. It is a modern SaaS platform that has been designed to support end-to-end -end workflows for in vivo studies. Signals Research Suite has been carefully developed to cater to the unique needs of various personas and collaborators that are involved in planning and execution of in vivo experiments. Whether you are a pharmacologist, an animal technician, a formulation or a biomedical scientist, or even a data admin, this platform offers tools and features that will support you throughout every, every stage of the study. It integrates the power of Signal's notebook with advanced data processing capabilities, as well as cutting edge analytics provided by Spotfire into a single unified platform. With Signal's research suite, you can create configurable workflows. You can build standardized study templates to ensure consistency across studies. It allows end-to-end -end data management by integrating with instruments in Yearland and thereby making it easier to track and centralize data and eliminate data silos. It gives you access to advanced analytics and visualization tools that helps you to gain insights into your data in real time. Because it offers traceability at every step, Signals Research Suite enhances collaboration and data sharing across your entire organization. The platform allows you to create study templates by using the Data Model Designer app. This app allows you to add control vocabularies to your template. You can also configure customized data capture um, fields. You can add um, procedural steps in advance to create the template. The templates once created can be reused across different experiments to support consistency in study design. It can help to minimize errors and it can facilitate complete documentation of reagents, animal models, or procedural steps during the execution of the study. Training on such standardized templates will help you to guide best practices across the organization. The Signals Research Suite capabilities for in vivo research is supported by a collection of Spotfire based apps. Now, these apps are designed to support different tasks for different persona during the execution of an in vivo study. The apps cover all activities starting from study designing to data collection and data analysis, and finally, publication of data. Moreover, these apps can be added in sequence to create configurable workflows. Use of workflows along with task management features in the ELN will be instrumental in streamlining the execution of the studies and to foster collaboration and communication. Our study designer app simplifies designing and planning of complex in vivo studies. It allows you to describe your study cohort, it um, define your treatments, and organize treatment groups. You can also specify the different procedural steps to include in the study and build a comprehensive study schedule using guided steps. The platform also has additional apps and functionalities to support data capture throughout the study, all the way from baseline to in-life measurements, and it also includes sophisticated tools for data analysis. Shown here is an example of a pharmacokinetic study. As you can see, there are built-in data tables that were used to capture the dosing and the sampling data. 
And later on, another app, an analysis app called the PK Parameters app that was used to calculate the PK parameters of the drug compound. The final results and analysis can be exported as text or PDF files and then subsequently uploaded to the ELN for um, future. ELN remains the single source of truth and becomes a central repository for all data generated during the study, ensuring that all study data is easily accessible and reliable. The platform is also supported by state-of-the-art visualization capabilities provided by TIPCO Spotfire. Here is an example of a biodistribution study where Spotfire Analytics was used to create an interactive anatomical map of a mouse. Clicking on a particular organ will show the distribution of the drug molecule in that organ for that particular treatment group. You can further filter the data to show either mean distribution or distribution for individual animal or distribution across treatment groups inside the same organ. And in summary, Signals Research Suite is an end-to-end -end platform and your one-step solution for in vivo research. With our platform, you can improve efficiency through configurable workflows that can be easily customized to meet your specific organization needs. You can minimize errors and inconsistency with standardized study uh, templates. These templates can be reused so you're not starting from scratch every time and will really help in maintaining accuracy. You can finally eliminate data silos. SRS helps you to centralize all your data in your ELN so it's seamlessly integrated and easily accessible across teams. This fosters better collaboration as well as um, keeps everyone uh, on the same page. Finally, our powerful spot for analytics help you to deep, uh, dive deep into your results and um, gain insights, thereby empowering you to drive innovation. Overall, Signals Research Suite simplifies the process for you so that as a researcher, you can be efficient and focus more on the science.